You don't want to miss this. Let me show you. I've created now an activity where we can translate an object across a graph. Now here's how it works. First thing, I'm going to click the green flag just to make sure it's all reset. And then I'm going to go down, I'm going to click this green button. It's called translations. And when I do that, a button falls, the background changes, a hexagon appears out of nowhere, right in the center of this graph. And now what I can do with it is, um, I can move this hexagon, I can click the space bar, and look what happens, it, it stamps it. And then I can move it up if I want, and I can move it sideways, let me click them together, stamp it, and I can keep doing that and create, you know, interesting natural type patterns. You know how beehives are made, um, how beehives are linked together, the hexagonal shapes, and I can keep creating a tessellation like this. So anyways, let's see how that appears. But before that, what kind of things did I need to create? Well, let me reset this and let's count them all. So let me click the green flag. Look what happens to all these designs here when I click the green flag. They all just vanish and this appears. So I need a background. That's one thing with a title. I need the button translations. That's two things so far. I need a hexagon and I need the fourth thing I need is the grid paper. So I need four things. I got to create four things. Let's go ahead and do that. First thing you're going to see when you open up your Scratch account is you're going to see that little pesky kitty cat. So we're going to click the scissors. We're going to X them out. We don't want them there. Now let's create the first two backgrounds. That's the easy part. So I'm going to click stage. I'm going to go back to the top backdrops. I'm going to click the T button and I'm going to just type math transformations. Click enter, go down, say by um, type your name in. I'm going to type mine. And now we can center it, click outside. You're going to get these little nails appearing. So you're just going to grab them and you're going to move it like that. And that's a good size. So that's my first background. It's my title page, but I need a second one. So for my second one is going to be grid paper. If you don't like the grid paper that Scratch gives you, you can upload your own by clicking this button and getting one off Google, save it on your computer and do all that jazz. I'm going to use the one they give me because it's good enough. I like it. I'm going to go down and it's the very last one. I'm going to double click and look, it appears. Now I've got my two backgrounds. I'm all, I'm half done already. I'm half done. That's without the coding, of course, but I'm half done my setup. Now that I've got my two backgrounds, I can move on and create my two sprites. My sprites are my characters. They're the things that are going to do stuff for me and move around and, and create magic, you know. So here's how I do it. I go here, look at the bottom. It says sprites. I'm going to move across and it says new sprite. Now, if you want, you can use the sprites that they give you. These are their characters. If you want to kind of make designs with arrows and translate them or bananas or baseballs or maybe airplanes or whatever you want, bats. Yeah, they got it all. Or you can scroll down the list of all these things here. I'm not going to use any of them. I like hexagons because they make cooler designs than these. Maybe you disagree in which you can use one of these. But I'm going to use the hexagon. Now, it doesn't give us hexagons, so that means I got to upload my own. So go back down to sprites, and if you want to upload your own, you click this button. It says upload. It takes you to your picture, so scroll down and find the hexagon. Make sure you get it off Google. And there it is. Now, it's too big. It's huge. It's taken up almost the entire page. So I'm going to click these arrows that say shrink, and I'm going to shrink it. I'm going to click it. And you got to be careful because it's got to be right on it. Ah, oh, then it disappears. This may take a while. Let's see this. If you want, you can, <laughs> if you want, you can just fast forward this part because I'm going to click and then it disappears. It's so picky. That's why it wants to be on top of the shape at all times. Okay. There we go. There we go. Yes. I got this. I got it. Seems to work better on the corners. I'll do maybe one more. Ah, sure. It's still there. Okay. That's good. Now what? Here's a good habit to keep in mind. Whenever you make a sprite, it's always a good idea to center it. How do you do that? Well, click the sprite at the bottom. Go to the top and go to costumes. Then go to the cross. Now you see the cross. It's already centered. That's a beautiful thing. The cross is right in the middle. But if it was on like the edge over here, that's kind of messed up. So let's take our cross again. We don't want it on the edge. We want it right in the center. 
and it sort of messed things up a bit. Let me re-upload this thing. See, that's what happens when you mess around. Actually, maybe it didn't do any damage. Let's see. If I go Control Z. Okay, yeah, Control Z fixes everything. Hey, actually, there's a button on here that says undo. All right, let's keep going with this. So it's centered now. Let's make sure it looks pretty good. And now I have my third out of four characters. I need one more, which is my translation button. So I'm going to go back to sprites. I'll go new sprite. I'm going to make my own button by the paint feature. And go here. Let's go. Let's go. That cross is still there. Let's get rid of it. It won't go away. All right, no problem. Picture rectangle. There, now it's gone. Don't click this one. Click this one because we want to make it one color. Click the green color. Go like this. Then go T. Click the black so we can make it black letters. And type translation. Translation. Click on the outside. Drag it. Make it nice and big. And then just center it manually. You're good to go. Now look, it's huge on the side. So we can easily shrink it down by clicking this. And this should be easier to shrink. Shrink it down even more. And now we've got our four characters. Let's count them all. We've got our two backdrops. One, two. I've got my hexagon. It's centered. I've got my translation button. Let's get in the habit of centering it. Click the cross. Oh, it's a little bit off. Let's just click it right in the middle. I think that's okay. Let's double check. It doesn't have to be even perfect. Like this one can care less about this button here. Um, but now we've got our four characters. Now let's start telling the computer what we want it to show and what we want it to hide. When I first start, I click my green arrow. See the hexagon and the grid? They disappear. The only things that appear are the title and the button. The other two things, the grid paper and the hexagon, disappear at the start. So let's see how we can do that. We do it with code. So go here, click stage, and click script. And go to events and click the flag. When the flag is clicked, click looks because this is the way the page is going to look. And go to switch backdrop, not to XY grid, but to backdrop one. And I know it's backdrop one because when I click backdrops, my title right here is called backdrop one. That's my title. So now I'm going to go back to the script. And I'm going to say, okay, so now this part is ready. If I click, for example, the backdrop over here, and what it should do now, the script says, well, when the green flag is clicked, then it automatically needs to switch to backdrop one. Let's see if it does that. Now it's a grid. Now it's backdrop one. Perfect. So far. The problem now is the hexagon is appearing. I want it to disappear. So easy enough. Click hexagon. Then go to events. When the green flag is clicked, what should the hexagon do? You need to tell the computer what it needs to do. We want it to go to the looks because we want it to look a certain way and we want to click hide. We want to hide it. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it listens to us. Click the flag and it hides. Okay. But Mr. Mellum, we need to use it. We need to appear. We need it to appear, but not yet. One thing at a time. That's how computers work. They're very unintelligent. They just do what you tell it to do. So tell it to hide, it's going to hide. Let's go to the next phase. Now I have my sign. Where do I need to tell the computer to put it? Do I want to start it here? Do I want to start it there? Really, it's up to you. I'm going to start it up here. So now I'm going to click this button. I'm going to go to scripts, which is already on scripts. And I'm going to say event. When the flag is clicked, I want this button, first off, looks, I want to show it and I want to put it in this spot. So go to motion. Look what happens to this here, this coordinates. Look at these numbers. When I move it, the numbers move as well. So first put it in the spot you want it. Let the numbers fix themselves 
and then tell it there. So look what happens if I put it down here and I click the flag, the computer's going to do, okay, flag is clicked. I'm going to show the button and I'm going to move it to this exact spot. Look, now you see it there. Now it goes to where I wanted it to go. That's how computers think. They just do what you tell them to do. I told it to do this. Perfect. Now, what do I want to do next? I want some magic to happen. I want to change the background and I want the hexagon to go poof and appear. So one thing at a time. I'm going to click this button, but nothing's happening now. You know why? Because I didn't tell the computer what to do when I click this button. Okay, so go to events. That's like anytime you click something, that's an event. So go to events. And look what it says here. When the sprite is clicked, what should I do? Well, I want to move it down. But I want the sprite to also announce a message to all the other sprites and backgrounds. And this is the message. Watch. I'm going to go to broadcast. And my message is going to be really anything you want. I'm going to say, let the games begin. Let the games begin. That's just a message it's going to shout out. Now, you're not going to hear it, but all the other action figures I just created are going to hear everything that I just typed, and they're going to do what I tell it to do. And I want this thing to move down. So go to motion. I'm going to go to glide because I want it to go down nicely. But look again, these numbers, the 27 and the 2, when I move it down, they change. Glide one second, see the numbers changed. So put it in the spot you want it to be and then click the glide. There. Let's reset it. So when I click the flag, it's going to go to this spot. And when I click the button, it's going to glide down. And you didn't hear it, but it just broadcast, let the games begin. And it just shouted it. You didn't hear it, but everything else heard it. But how come nothing happened? How come they didn't do anything? Because I didn't tell the other characters what to do when they hear that sound. They don't know what to do. They hear it. They're like, okay, it says let the games begin, but what do we do? No problem. Well, we want the hexagon to appear. So let's click the hexagon. Let's go to events. And then it says when I receive, so when the hexagon receives, let the games begin. It's going to look it's going to show right. Let's try it. Click the flag. When I click this button, not only is it going to move, but it's going to shout, let the games begin. And then the hexagon's going to hear it and it's going to go, okay, time for me to appear. Let's see. Oops. Okay. I got to click it first. Click the translation. Huh. It appeared. It knew when to do it because now I told it what to do. But what happened? What, well, what didn't happen? What didn't happen was my background never changed. I need to change my background. So click b stage, go back to the top backdrops, go to script and tell this background what to do when it hears the announcement. So go to events, go to when I receive, let the games begin. When I receive it, what should I do? Go to looks. It's going to look a certain way. The background will change. Switch. Go to the first one. Switch to the XY grid. Not the backdrop one. That's what we already have. We're going to go to XY grid. Let's try it. Reset. Click. Boom. It switched. It's beautiful. But you know what? I don't like that hexagon sitting on the side. I want to put the hexagon in the center. So that's easy to do. I just click the hexagon. I go to script. It's already there. I go to motion. Now, remember these coordinates? That's what's going to set it. So I want it to start in the middle. So these numbers right now aren't really, th these numbers are where it is currently. When I put it in the middle, say that's approximately the middle, these numbers change. I want it there. So when it shows, I want it to show at that spot. So it's going to hear the command, it's going to show up, and it's going to go to that exact spot. 
Let's try it again. You should always test it out one step at a time. So click the flag, it resets. Click the button. Beautiful, I love that. Now the last thing we need to do is to teach it how to move. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna teach it how to move, teach it how to duggy. So we're gonna go to um, events again because moving um, starts with a button push and we're gonna move it in four different directions. So the first one you're gonna go when the left arrow is clicked. The second one you're gonna go when the right arrow is clicked. And the next one is gonna be when the up arrow and then again, when the down arrow. And before I forget, I need one also for the space bar to stamp it. Remember, I need to stamp these uh, images that I create. So the space bar will be the last one. So now I have to teach it how to move. Okay, well, that's the first signal. It's going to notice I'm pushing the left arrow and then it should go left. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to go to uh, move. I'm going to say move. I don't want it to move 10 steps. 10 is too many steps. Let's say uh, five steps. And you can test it out and decide how big the steps should be. So now when I click the left arrow, it's gonna move five steps. Let's test it. I'm gonna click the left arrow right now. Oh, okay, it's moving, but uh, I'm clicking, but it's going the wrong way. <laughs> you know why? Because I put positive five steps. I want it to go left, baby. I gotta put negative five steps. Now it knows backwards. So now I'm going to click the left arrow and it'll actually go the way that it's supposed to go. It should go left. So now what should I do? I should go to the right arrow and now I'm going to move not 10 steps. That's too big of a gap. But let's go positive five. And now when I click the right arrow, it should go right, which leaves only three more moves up, down, and then the space bar. So up means it has to go up. So up and down is on the Y axis, right? What up and down is vertical. So there's an option for that. If you go here, don't change X by 10, go change Y. Change the Y value, the vertical component by five steps. And then change Y when it goes down, change it by negative five steps. So click negative five, so it goes down, negative is down. And then the last one is when the space bar is clicked, go to the pen option and click stamp. It's a really cool option that pen the pen option provides you and it'll stamp it. So look now, I can I can click the space bar and look, it stamps it. And I can move it left, I can go up. This is so awesome, look at that. I go up, I can click them together. And I can move it like this and stamp it. And I can make as many as I want until the page is full. But there's one problem. And, and that's because when I click the green flag, it'll reset except for those stamps I made are still there. And you probably can guess why they're still there. You probably don't need me to explain to you is because I didn't tell the computer to erase the stamps. So let's tell it to. When do I want it to erase the stamps? When I click this button, right? So let's tell it to do that. Let's click the hexagon again. Let's go to events and say when the flag is clicked, go to the pen option and go clear. I want to clear the pen, the stamps, right? So I want to clear the stamps. Now look, if I click the flag, it'll instantly know what to do. See how silly computers are? They just don't know what to do unless you tell it what to do. Now the program is complete. I can test it from beginning to end. I'm going to click this and go down. This appears. I can, I can instantly stamp it move it, stamp, move, stamp, I can go up, stamp, stamp, and then as soon as I click the green button, everything resets. You know what, everybody, listen, this is not easy, this is really challenging, and it does take a different component, different part of your brain to be able to do this stuff. And you know what? It's not going to be easy, but I promise you, once you get the hang of this and you've watched this a few times and you've practiced it, it'll sure be worth it. You guys take care. I'll catch you all later.